Welcome to The Lounge Show, your weekly stop for films, food, fashion and more. On the show this week, a mountain sport comes to the big city, a chat with historian Simon Sabag Montefiore on his latest work about Jerusalem, and we'll tell you if the latest comedy film is worth the trip to the theater. Ice skating has long been the reserve of hill stations, but a new establishment in Delhi tries to replicate the experience for those far away from the mountains. Here's a look. Moments Mall at Kirti Nagar has brought the experience of ice skating to the new Delhi crowd. When we were working on some, you know, new concept, we wanted to bring something which people of India have never, never experienced. They have always desired for the ice skating. So that came up with the, you know, thought process of bringing ice skating to India. With children and young teenagers being most visible on the rink, safety becomes a top priority. We had a special technological material which has high impact absorbing material. It has reduced hardness effect of you know two to three person. When a person, when a kid falls down, it should not hurt that person. That's the concept behind this. We have five to six trained people. Our team, our foreign team, especially came here, trained that team for one month and actually, you know, made them expertise in dealing with kids. All said and done, the children will always have the last word on this concept. And here's what they had to say. It was a nice place. It was the best day in my life. And I'm enjoying it over here. You all should come here. Thank you for giving it one. Simon Sabag Montefiore's first book was about Catherine the Great and Potemkin, and it made him one of Britain's best-known young historians. He followed up with two landmark books about the life and times of Joseph Stalin. And now he's come out with his most complex work yet, a single volume history of the city of Jerusalem. Min Supriya Nair caught up with the author at the Jaipur Literature Festival to find out what drew him to write about monarchs and one of the world's holiest cities. I've always been going to Jerusalem since I was very young. And the reason is because we have a family connection. Uh, my great great uncle, was called Sir Moses Montefiore, and he essentially founded the modern city of Jerusalem, which he, when he started to build his own Montefiore Quarter, as it's called, uh, outside the city walls. And that was the beginning of, of, of the sort of new city of Jerusalem, which is now huge, of course. And so because of that connection, I've been going to Jerusalem all my lifetime. So 100 years later, we still have a sort of relationship with the city. And, um, and so that's how I got to know the city. That's why I'm familiar with it. It's not why I wrote the book. I wrote the book because the book needed writing. It didn't exist. You know, a history of Jerusalem is partly a history of facts and partly a history of myths. And all the myths are in the Bible or the Quran. So um, to write the history without any of the myths would, would be to miss... Would, that would be like writing about Jerusalem without the religion. And without the religion, it's, un, it's incomprehensible. The sacred texts are famously unintellig unintelligible, often totally obscure, um, and they're not written the Bible is, is even more difficult than most sources because it's written by many people. We don't know who they are and we don't know when they wrote it. Um, obviously, it's partly a collection of mythological stories, but it's partly, and it's partly um, political stories or personal stories told with a, with a particular political religious um, aim in sight, in, in mind. So, of course, it's a difficult thing to use. But having said that, it is a source and it does contain, in parts very useful materials. The question is, of course, deciding which they are. Well, funny enough, you know, a lot of... It's won the Jewish Book of the Year Prize in America. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, if you look on Facebook, you'll see that some Palestinians have written that it should win the Arab Book of the Year Prize. So that's quite a nice thing. Yes. And, um, and quite unusual for someone with me with all my Jewish and Zionist connections. Um, so that's been quite gratifying. Rafiq Elias directs one of this week's film releases, a comedy called Love You to Death. It's a story about love, therapy, and murder. Sanjukta Sharma gives us a review. Love You to Death is meant to be a black comedy. Director Rafiq Elias and his writers take pot shots at the absurdities of modern life while weaving a murder thriller. 
an interesting premise, but the execution is choppy and unintentionally humorous. With human problems. Yuki Elias plays a young woman with inheritance who is married to Chandan Roy Sanyal. The family's matriarch, played by Suhasini Mule, is chasing Sonia's wealth and controls the family's decisions. Murders are planned and betrayals revealed as the narrative fumbles along to the climax. And therapy that doesn't. The characters are quirky like a sex expert who's a rock star by night and a malicious housewife who gets thrills out of playing video games with her domestic help. Accident Sadly, the moments don't have enough impact. Yuki gives herself to the role but her histrionics are too obviously contrived. Love You To Death Love You To Death tries to be eccentric and edgy on paper, but is unconvincing, often laughably amateurish on screen. And that's it for this week. Thanks for watching.